but by anyone's judgment, they would have to be considered clever. out of this field every instant, every nanosecond, there is a, a new creation emerging out of the field. And a lot of the, the physics of, uh, of zero-point energy is finding out that the key to uh, interacting with this field and tapping it is, is resonance, as has been talked about a number of times before. I, uh, Years ago, I did a number of experiments with piezoelectric ringing resonance, which was resonating piezoelectric crystals. And I found that at certain states of resonance, these crystals actually put out more power than you were putting in. It was a matter of tuning them just properly. And I find it really profound to, to, to see that at certain states of resonance, effects take place that seem to contravene or um, contradict the, our understanding of the laws of physics and, and our understanding of the laws of conservation of energy. And this, I believe, also has profound implications for understanding the nature of ourselves. Because we ourselves, right in this moment, are pervaded by that field of boundless luminosity, infinite energetic potential. Literally, our entire biocrystalline manifestation is emerging out of this plenum as an integrated complex of asymmetries arising out of this field of boundless potential. This is, this is the view that's actually being put, brought forth at the leading edge of physics and the dynamic that we're facing in terms of how do we bring these technologies forth uh, into the marketplace. I think there's a, a multi-tiered approach that we should take. I've, I've observed over a number of decades, the nature of the suppression of these technologies. And that happened to me. I actually had my laboratory destroyed a couple times in the process of developing these technologies. And I wasn't coming from a paranoid place, but that actually happened. And I found that to be an amazing, uh, amazing effect, almost more interesting than the overunity effect, that you, you develop a device and then people show up and destroy your lab. Like, that was, to me, that was a very powerful piece of data about the nature of the power, the power structure on the planet. And I believe that we need to recognize that over time, that the dynamics and the strategies of suppression have become more sophisticated. I hear m many less stories of people who are actually threatened or having their labs destroyed these days. The way they generally affect us is uh, through just, if we become on the radar, we just, they just make sure we don't get funded or they send certain agents of chaos into our, into our field that prevents us from getting our, our business together to try to bring these things forth. And it really seems like right now the, uh, the powers that be have their hands full with all kinds of other power struggles on the planet. And that they're not so much concerned with if a couple inventors develop free energy devices. I know quite a few people who have operating devices and they haven't had any problems. But the process of actually bringing them to market and mass producing them, that's the place at which these efforts get shut down. And they tend to get shut down in a, a variety of ways. But I think that given that we're, we're trying to break through this uh, challenge and get actual clean energy technologies that, are, that represent this quantum leap forward, that are really resonant field technologies that, that are just have no, um, really are not utilizing any fuel and are just tapping energy um, from the field in some way, or way shape, or form. That, um, that kind of technology, I think, is so profound in terms of its advent on the planet that to try to just push it out according to the old business models may be part of the problem because these technologies are based on a, a completely different physics. You put one of these on the table and you demonstrate it to people and it provides an unassailable counterexample to the, 
the entire justification for a world in which the social, political, and economic structure is based in fear and scarcity. You know, and that the threat at psychological levels, the, the challenge to change our paradigm, is just implicit in these technologies themselves. I believe there's, the resistance is not just that it threatens financial interests. It threatens to pull the rug out from under the entire dominant world view. And, and, and that dominant world view is one that actually needs to dissolve at this time if we're to survive. That world view is, is a world view that cannot allow humanity to go forward and develop a sustainable culture in harmony with the Earth. So what, what the free energy technologies are pointing to is, is a very, very profound um, transformation of the very nature of being human. The, um, the fact that these technologies are emerging at this time, I see as a reflection of an awakening of consciousness that's going on throughout the species. And the, uh, the need to, re re to recognize that since they're involving a whole new physics, a whole sort of, in a sense, a more spiritual physics, we actually need to rethink our whole strategies about bringing these technologies forward. Many of the old sort of capitalistic business models um, have real problems in terms of that because there's this element of needing to make money <laughs> that's kind of right there in the middle of the whole equation that, in fact, the whole monetary aspect of, of our reality right now needs to be really considered and looked at with greater depth. It's something that hasn't been mentioned a whole lot here, but our current economic system our planetary economic system is actually has, has no basis in any real value. The Federal Reserve system, the, the Federal Reserve notes are basically fiat money. They're just generated by the, de the declaration, let there be money. And they're, de they're designed in such a way, they're designed to, to keep us hamstrung in debt. They're actually evidence of debt. When you have dollar bills, those are actually IOUs, meaning you owe that to the Federal Reserve. The fact that we have a profoundly, screechingly unjust monetary system that we, within which we're attempting to move forward with these technologies, this, this economic system that we're in is highly manipulated and controlled. And it's one of the most profound ways that the movements forward in new energy and all kinds of other areas, social, political, economic, the whole general planetary emergence of a, of a new paradigm-based culture is being straitjacketed economically by an economic system that is based on no real value. In fact, it's basically based on the theft of trillions and trillions of dollars that is, is are being generated by, by the human family. If you just, um, basically what is going on, and this is hard for a lot of people to wrap their minds around, the fact that uh, the way the government is currently operating actually makes Enron look like a paragon of integrity. <laughs> the, um, if you're aware of the, the work of Catherine Austin Fitz and uh, Solari, the need to actually in, in addition to redesigning the energy infrastructure, we need to take on the challenge that is before all humanity to redesign the architecture of the economy so that we have a just economy that actually reflects the values of an emerging planetary culture. There's a, just to give you a, a glimpse of um, the level of theft that is going on, you know, in our, in our government. It just look at whereisthemoney.org. That just gives you a little glimpse of it. But the fact is that there is no accountability in, in the current economic system. It's been designed that way. In fact, the way accounting is taught 
to this, all the CPAs is, in a, is a way that obfuscates and prevents accountability. The only way that originally accounting was to make the people accountable. And it's, we don't have such a, a, a form of accounting. So there's a need to really basically redesign the monetary system. And that's something we can actually do in our local communities. It's, we are the ones who give value to Federal Reserve notes. You know, we all are having to use them to varying degrees, but I think that what we are being challenged to do, that the new energy movement is, is a sign of, we're being challenged to redesign a completely new kind of planetary culture, a completely new social, political, economic, and psycho-spiritual system that these clean energy technologies really enable us to, um, to they're, in fact, they're a symbol of that new kind of covenant with the earth, a new kind of pact of our choice to be truly walking lightly on the earth and living in a humble, sustainable way in relationship to the biosphere. The, the, the call that is really emerging, and I'm seeing this emerging all over the planet, is to develop a new kind of culture, a new visionary culture that is a culture of peace and harmony with the biosphere. This new culture has a number of natural ethics that are part of it, they're, and they're based on a, a higher state of consciousness, a more expanded, more feeling-based, feeling-connected base with, with the whole interconnected web of life. This is something the indigenous cultures have a lot to teach us, that we in the Western cultures have are walking around with a lot of trauma in our systems. We are in a state of sort of emotional dissociation from our interconnectedness. That's how we can go about continuing to just pollute and pour toxic waste into the oceans and the rivers and somehow think that that's somehow separate from us. That kind of uh, emotional disassociation, dissociation at the, feet, at the root of our, of our body minds is something that needs to be overcome. We need to bring our bodies back to life and regenerate our feeling functions. Because <clears throat> one of the things that will drive this movement to success is an emotional, a whole bodily connected emotional passion coming out of our love for the earth. And if that is crippled and if we're, we're walking around in sort of in, in trauma, it's very hard to mobilize the, the coherent focus and intention that can drive us forward to overcome the challenges that, that lie before this movement. <clears throat> and so my, what I was, would suggest is to think not only of constantly having to like penetrate the mainstream with these new energy technologies, but recognize that there is also, in parallel to that effort, which is very important, there is also the development of a completely new kind of planetary culture that is already just embodying these principles. And they're not interested in making the dominant culture change. They're just going ahead and be creating living demonstrations of this new way of being, living in new communities that are in harmony with the earth. And in many of these communities, the most conspicuous place where there's still a lack of integrity is that they still need to ge generate their energy in, in a way that is often tied into the power grid or to fossil fuels. And so these, these clean energy technologies that um, this movement is supporting and engendering and, and helping nursemaid into being are really the critical element in allowing a, a much higher integrity embodiment of new culture to take place all over the planet. And the recognition that right now given that we're dealing with this very difficult economic uh, challenge of just getting funded. I mean, it should, it should be kind of mind-blowing that the amount of money that's flying around the planet every day, you know, and the amount of money that's being spent on war and, and all kinds of things that are actively destructive to life and, and the planet, that we, we as a movement what we require is such a pittance, such a tiny little bit of that money, and that we have, in our collective intelligence, have not been able to bring it into this movement yet, is a huge sign of the economic lockdown, economic dictatorship that we're living under. The fact that we do not have an economic democracy, which is what Thomas Jefferson 
was constantly a champion of and said that we have to have an economy in which the form of the economy is chosen by the people. We do not have that. We have an economic dictatorship, and it is oppressing so many people and preventing the development of all kinds of innovations that are just yearning to come forth. So the, there's, there's a, a, a movement all over the world that's developing alternative currencies in which they're, they're just dropping out of, in mind, the, the Federal Reserve's note system or the fractional reserve banking system and just developing local currencies that enable people to have sort of bioregional, barter-based uh, ways of exchanging value in which you don't have this, um, the, the problems that the current economic system has, like charging interest. Charging interest really screws up the whole original meaning of money. Because you know, money's just representing goods and, goods and services to be exchanged. And then suddenly, people got the idea that just for, for lending money to somebody, you should actually make money off of money. And that actually starts distorting and is, eventually, is tr tremendously distorted the whole economic system, such that there's whole groups of people who are just making enormous amounts of money without lifting a finger, providing no goods and services. And then the, the vast majority of the planet is required to toil and struggle in hard labor to barely survive. The need to redress that imbalance is something that these clean energy technologies can play a central role in. Because these clean energy technologies are a new form of delivering power to the people. It really is, by its very nature, a power to the people movement. As people start having access to their own systems where they can just freely tap into the universal ambient energies and use it for electrical power and not have to pay for it, you know, other than the, the cost of the device. Th this really heralds a completely new form of distributed power. And it's not just distributed electrical power, but it also reflects a, a new form of power sharing among the human race. And the, the deep connections between electrical power and and power, the, the resonances between that and the need to change the power structure that this, this movement brings about. It's, so it has profound spiritual roots and it connects with many other like peace and social justice movements around the planet. And I think we can align with those movements and we need to really make a clear and incisive case that the new energy movement is completely and coherently integral to a whole range of other movements that are, that are in the process of attempting to bring forth their agendas, which are really part of building a new world that's more peaceful and, and embodies a, a kind of in integral social justice in harmony with the biosphere. So my thought is that in addition to working to bring these technologies out in a way that gets them into the mainstream um, marketplace, which we need to do. There's no doubt about that. But we also can recognize that in calling these technologies free energy technologies, perhaps we should also, at this stage in, the, in our process, be in complete integrity with the fact they're free energy technologies and forget about making money on them and just build them and give them to people.